Welcome back to page 121. Today we're going to take a look at a product that was out to support Starter Traveler, a video I did a little while ago. Uh, this is Tarsus, World Beyond the Frontier. Uh, it's, it's a nice little offering that I used a lot in my campaign. This would be just around the fringes of the Spindled Marches. There's the back artwork. So we're going to talk a little bit more about what the contents had and how this linked with Starter Traveler and what you could do with all of it. Well, not what you do with all of it, but <laughs> you know what I mean. So here we go. Tarsus, World Beyond the Frontier. Tarsus, World Beyond the Frontier. This uh, 1983 offering was a companion to Starter Traveler, which I've pre featured in a previous video. The idea being that instead of publishing little black books, they would publish these larger, more standard for the day size offerings to try to entice people to get in. The Little Black Books had, as I said, a little mystique to them. Uh, it was kind of a click. So they were trying to break the click and increase their sales. Tarsus is one of my favorite products GDW put out. I used this for years in my campaign. I, I haven't had a campaign set in Tarsus in a long time. The group I did have with uh, several of the members retired slash moved away. Uh, no longer in our game, so I kind of retired my Tarsus campaign. But back in the late 80s, early 90s, mid 90s, I ran a bunch of stuff in Tarsus. We're going to take a look at what came inside this box uh, and what you could do with it and why it was so special. So here we go. We're going to take a look at the, the first book. Pulling this guy out, we have Tarsus World Data. This gives us all the library data we need. The government, the military, the world, the actual data itself, so the universal world profile, everything you would need to start running your game. The hours of the day, the rotation, it's just, it's a very nice book to, to have ref, to be able to reference. There's animal encounters just for Tarsus. You get the idea. Temperature determination based on your latitude, and it's, it's just a, a good book. You can do a lot on one planet. As I've said before, the irony of Traveler is, you know, other role-playing games take place in one world for most of the game. Traveler, if you don't have a bunch of worlds to go to, you're feeling hemmed in. Uh, so this book does not have the glossy cover. Little cost savings on GDW's part, I think. But that's okay. It's inside a box set. Box set went about $12. I'm not feeling cheated just because I don't have a slick cover. Uh, coming over to... Some more stuff that's inside. These are various adventures. You could, this came in the pack. So adventures, there's openings, you know, Nobble Ranch, SUSAG, one of the mega corporations of Traveler. I want to do a video in the future about SUSAG uh, and uh, why they're one of my main go-to bad guys. Uh, mega corporation, think uh, Amazon, Walmart, Coca-Cola. This is one that this adventure is people of the forest, and then the fifth adventure is end games. So it's just a way to get the player characters moving around Tarsus and uh, getting a feel for it. Tarsus itself is set in District 268, which, if you're using a north, south, east, west designation, would put it just south of the Sword Worlds and a little bit uh, south, southwest of the edge of the Imperium. So it really is a world beyond the, the edge, world beyond the Imperium, beyond the frontier, because it is. It's not in the Imperium. Uh, one of the nice things about it, there are mains you can travel, but it was an independent kind of area, different law levels for different planets you went to, uh, different dealings in interstellar space. Uh, you didn't have the Imperium there as Big Brother tapping on your shoulder saying, hey, what are you doing? So it was a little more freewheeling. Uh, Here's the District 268 map showing Tarsus. Tarsus sits right down, right down there, uh, right along one of the mains. The group I had was in a Jump 2 uh, Far Trader, so they were able to move about. But here's a nice Jump 1 main running right there for you. Uh, it, it just gave you a nice basis to start a dungeon, if you will, which is kind of what everything was about at the time. Nothing on the back. And then we have... The world map of a specific area, the Tanglevald. And then we have the orange peel 
look at the planet itself. I never object to those. I find them very useful to uh, get an idea of where players are on the planet, where they're headed. Again, this is a whole planet, and it's you know not enough for this game. One of the things I love about Traveler. One of the other things that this had was uh, pretty unique to this game. It had these little cards. They're perforated. And the cards were NPCs or player characters, depending on your time. If you were a little pressed for time, you could just tear off one of these cards and use it as a player character. So it was very helpful in this set. And again, since you're just starting playing, in theory, because you bought Tarsus with the starter set, uh, it's a good idea to get people into having a character in front of them, to know what the heck they look like, to start knowing what the numbers on the upper right corner mean, that kind of thing. And then they did something that was really clever marketing, I thought. <clears throat> this, I'll hold it up a little closer. This is the Traveler series. It's a little handout that was in the box and shows all the stuff in the Traveler series, front and back, that was available by 1983. This is quite a list. And the idea there was to get you excited about Traveler. If you just bought this, this is your intro to Traveler, along with uh, Starter Traveler. Well, here are other places you can go ahead and grab up the books for, you know, $6 each and start reading more and more about Traveler. So I thought it was a really good marketing idea. Uh, I, yeah, it's if you're going to introduce somebody to Traveler, I felt that this set and the Starter set were a really good way to do it. And then, of course, we have all their marketing, where you bought it, who you are, uh, and then you mail it back to Game Designer Workshop using your own stamp, mind you. Uh, but again, early 80s, they were hoping that people would send them back. I never really did that, uh, so I still have all these catalog request cards and things like that. So that's really it for my look at Tarsus, World Beyond the Frontier. Um, this is a great set. It's available in Drive-Thru RPG. I do recommend it. It's got some nice depth to it. If you're looking for a campaign where the player characters are just going to kind of stay based out of one planet and then move around easily because it's a jump one main that this planet is on, uh, but it's beyond Imperial uh, fingers, this is a really good set. Plus, it's a box. You get to carry all your goodies in it. Uh, I used the heck out of this box set. I had it on my table for years. Um, in fact, now having done the research for this video and having looked at the box set, yeah, guys, you're probably going back to Tarsus for a little while. I'm, I'm feeling nostalgic. So that's all I have for today on page 121, Tarsus World Beyond the Frontier. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please uh, leave some comments below, like, and subscribe, and I'll see you next time on page 121.